a critically acclaimed award-winning artist sits down at her piano and creates the most beautiful, haunting melody to the incredibly impactful and profound lyrics she just wrote. She's in one of her emotional lows, and she also knows that this is when the magic happens. This is when she is at her most creative. And when she sings a song and other people hear it, they are moved to tears. The singer is Adele, and she has the individual emotional wave. In this episode, I cover the individual emotional wave. I go over the mechanics of this wave, and it swings from deep melancholy low lows to the high highs, how you may experience it, whether you have this wave to find yourself or not, how you can create this wave with somebody else, someone that you're in relationship with or you're around. This can also show up through planetary transits. And I'll also give you tips on how to navigate this wave, especially in its lows, so that you can make the most of this incredible creative energy. Welcome to Heart-Centered Human Design, Emotional Intelligence and Conscious Business, the show for heart-centered entrepreneurs that want meaningful success and work-life balance so they can wake up in the morning feeling inspired, empowered, and supported by work and life. I'm your host, Vanessa Naja, Human Design Coach and Mentor, and I love sharing this incredibly powerful system with you so that you can create an amazing business, an amazing life that you absolutely love. This is the fourth part of a five-part section of this podcast about the emotional waves. In episode 17, I gave a breakdown of all the emotional waves. So that's season two, episode 17. Season two, episode 18, I talked about the source wave, which is the source of all of the emotional waves. In the last episode, I talked about the tribal wave. We'll be going over the individual wave today, and next week we will cover the collective wave. Now, if you are brand new to human design, all of this might sound like mumbo jumbo to you, and that's okay. If you go back to season one, I started the very beginning and walk you through everything that you need to know, and you'll still get something out of this episode, and you might recognize yourself or other people that you know your loved ones by listening to this episode. Now, remember, about 53% of the population has a defined emotional solar plexus. It's the left-facing triangle on the right side of the chart. If it's colored in, it's defined. And that means you have emotional authority if it's defined and you have at least one of these waves that we're covering. If you are emotionally undefined, meaning that triangle is not colored in, then you are actually very emotionally empathic and you are picking up the emotions of others. You are picking up and amplifying other people's emotional waves. You can actually feel their emotions in their body and you're going to be experiencing waves in, in a way that's unique to you coming from the outside. Now, whether you're defined or undefined, you can also create emotional waves with other people that you don't have. So if you have one of the gates that form the channel that creates the wave and the other person has the other gate, when you come together, you create this wave together. So understanding how these waves work is really relevant to everybody. Remember that human design is holistic. You are more the sum of your parts. So the way that these energies are going to show up to you are going to be related to all the other aspects in your chart as well. This is just a general overview of how these waves operate how you experience them is going to be completely unique to you, and it's also going to be based on the other parts of your chart. The wave is an inescapable chemical process, and it's really important to understand that, especially if you have this wave defined. It's going to be constantly in motion. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down, sometimes you're in between, and that is not related necessarily to what's going on on the outside. It can sometimes be triggered by outside things as well, but that wave is going to continue to move. So when you understand your wave and where you are in it and you learn to accept all of the beautiful aspects of it, whether you're low or whether you're high, it's such a healing experience. And I myself have an emotional wave, not this particular one. Learning about it was the most incredibly healing thing about human design for me and why I'm so passionate about sharing it with other people. So don't worry if you're emotionally defined and you experience these high highs and these low lows, we will talk about how to work with that energy for its highest expression and just understanding 
that this is something to accept and embrace, not something to try to escape because that wave is going to keep moving as long as you are alive. So the individual wave. There are two channels that make up this wave. I'll go deeper into them later on in the episode. And it's important to understand that anybody that has individuality in their human design chart, they are here to bring change. Individuality is mutative. It is highly creative. All individual channels and gates have a certain degree of melancholy in them. And that is part of the process of being an individual. Oftentimes, things that come out of individuality are ahead of their time. So there's an important element of waiting for the right timing to share what you have to share. And also individuality moves in pulses. Nothing might be happening. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. And then boom, all of a sudden something comes through. Something is happening. And that timing is, it's divine timing. You don't have a lot of control about the timing. You just have to trust that when you're in those lulls, when nothing is happening, that something will soon come. There's no point in forcing it, just allowing it to come through at the right time. Now, the individual wave is made up of two channels. We have channel 3955, and it runs from the root center, the square at the bottom of the chart, to the solar plexus. And then there is channel 2212, which runs from the solar plexus up to the throat center, the square, the third from the top. This wave is very much about the expression of moodiness, emotions, melancholy, passion, romance. It is creative. It is artistic. It is also very acoustic. So individuality is very acoustic. There's a lot here having to do with tone, also musicality. So instruments, singing, as I just mentioned in the beginning of the story, the singer Adele does have channel 1222. Now, I don't know that her process is exactly the way I described it, but I imagine it is something like that. But singing music, listening to music, creating things, expressing emotions vocally, especially with that 1222, is a big part of this wave. Now, for most people, and the way that this is technically described textbook, when you look at the textbooks, is that this wave is fairly even keel, and then it has short, quick spikes up into like excitement and joy and expression, and then goes back to neutral and then spikes down into like deep melancholy sadness. This is how it's described in the textbook. Now you're going to experience it different. Any emotional waves are so individual in how you experience them. And I know plenty of people that have the individual emotional wave and some of them do experience it in that textbook way. For example, my niece, I have she has a 1222 and I have watched her and it's fascinating because she's very even keel and then all of a sudden she will have these moments, these quick bursts of being really hyper, super excited, like, oh my God, everything's amazing, back to, you know, baseline. And then these just out of nowhere, deep dips, crying and melancholy and sad. And then it doesn't last very long, back to the middle. I know other people that have the individual wave that can be much more all over the place, um, the wave moving faster, the dips or the highs lasting longer. So again, there are the textbook definitions, but it's going to be completely individual to you how you experience the wave. There is a big element about moodiness and being in the mood with this wave and also the need for alone time. So this particular wave, like especially when you're feeling down on the wave, it can be really helpful to be alone and to know that those drops in the wave can be incredibly creative times. And I know people that have the individual wave that say when they're in these low lows and they engage in individual projects, it can actually be tremendously helpful for them to regulate their emotions. Individuality in your human design chart, in your design is very much about individual empowerment. So there is so much empowerment, both for yourself and also for other people that move through your aura that are inherent in these waves and any of the individual channels. This is creative. It's individual here to be different. It might be ahead of its time. Timing is very important. It operates in pulses and whether you have this wave or not, and even if you are emotionally undefined and you have a decision-making style or an authority that's that's very immediate, like sacral authority or splenic authority, if you have a lot of individuality in your chart, and especially if you have gate 55 or gate 22, like one of the emotional individual gates, and you go through these periods of deep melancholy, it's probably not the best time to make a decision. So 
allowing yourself to move through the melancholy and still making those important big decisions when you're in a fairly neutral place can be really helpful, even if you don't have emotional authority. So the two channels that make up this wave, we're going to start with the 3955. This is the channel of emoting or of provoking. It is fueled by adrenaline energy. It runs from that root center, that that adrenalized pressure to the emotional center. So these are adrenalized emotions. And there is so much access to really deep levels of creativity here. It's important to recognize that there is always the right mood or time for things in life to run smoothly. There's so much about timing in this wave and honoring timing, honoring your moods is really important. With the 3955, there can be a lot of passion in this wave, and this can be provocative to other people. It can be like a teasing energy, but it can also provoke others in a negative way. And it is here to tease out the true nature and the spirit of others. And with this wave, you can often tell who the right people are for you by how they are provoked by you. If you're if you provoke people in a really negative way, they they might not be the right people for you. And this is true for the gate 39 by itself as well as for the entire channel. It's important to really take plenty of alone time if you are not in the mood to connect with others, to engage in your creativity, and to know that this energy, it's at the very bottom of the chart. It runs from the root to the solar plexus, and if it doesn't have a connection to the throat center, it can be hard to express your emotions, and it can often be times of physically expressing your emotions versus verbally expressing them. So really having these intense moments of physicality and understanding that is normal for you and your ability to express your emotions verbally and talk them through with other people. When you are drawn to the right people that bring that energy to the throat for you, it's going to be easy for you to verbalize those emotions. So remember following strategy and authority to connect with the right people is a big part of, of human design in general and of also finding the right people that you can truly express yourself with. And it's okay if that isn't everybody. You don't have to share your deepest emotions and your melancholy with everybody. You just want to share them with the right people. There are going to be deep periods of melancholy with this wave, especially with the 55 being part of it. It's the most melancholic gate in the chart. And learning to enjoy that melancholy, to be with it, to allow yourself to feel those feelings, to know this is such a creative time for you and see what comes through in those moments is a really important aspect of working with this wave. And also understanding there is a potential for emotional eating with this wave. So when that energy fluctuates here, trying to numb through emotional eating or even shopping or hoarding or taking things in is an aspect that can happen in this wave. Being aware of that can be really helpful and allowing yourself to truly feel your emotions, feeling the lows, feeling the highs, allowing yourself to be in your body, being present with yourself and really taking advantage of the creativity that is inherent in this wave. So the 39 is the gate of obstruction and this is a general pressure to bring out the emotional expression of other people. This is provocative energy. This can be teasing energy. Uh, this energy can provoke other people even when you're not aware of it. I know this because I actually have this gate defined in my chart. It's unconscious. I don't have the 55, so I don't have the whole channel. And there can be those times where somebody's just provoked by you out of nowhere and you don't even know what you did or said to provoke them and they are just picking up on that energy. And I find this especially with people that have gate 55 but not gate 39. Together they form an electromagnetic. And so if you have that one gate and the other person has the other gate, you're creating this wave together. And it's really fascinating to see how this works. I have this electromagnetic with my sister and I definitely provoke her sometimes unconsciously. And when we are together, like in aura, this wave really becomes apparent to me and also to her. There is really an element of provoking people and spirits into abundance as well and creating abundance. In the low expression of this gate, there can be a lot of feelings of scarcity, fear of scarcity, hoarding, over shopping, holding on to too many things, and also the eating thing can show up here as well. So being aware of that and when that shows up, not judging yourself for it, just being present with it and allowing yourself to move into the high expression of this, which is all about provoking the spirit, creating abundance, turning things into abundance, is an important part of this gate. And then, of course, we have gate 55, which is all about abundance and spirit and the abundance of spirit 
the inner awareness of what you are emoting, what you are experiencing, being present with your emotions, the ups and downs. Remember, this is the most melancholic gate of the entire chart. So anybody that has this gate defined, and especially if it's in a prominent position in your chart, those periods of deep melancholy are an important part of who you actually are and learning to understand, appreciate, and tap into the creativity that is available to you there is such a beautiful way of stepping into the high expression of this energy and creating that abundance of spirit that is available to you. And abundance in life is a function of the spirit that you are experiencing in yourself. And you have, I'm sure if you're listening to this podcast, often heard about creating inside of you in your own energetics what you want to see in the outside world. So this is that function of the spirit of abundance that you're feeling inside of yourself before you can see it in the outside world. And allowing yourself to be present with this energy, not beating yourself up for when you're in the lows of it, because it's a totally normal part. This is when the creativity happens. And then expressing that creativity when you're in the highs of this energy. Another thing about gate 55, it's very indecisive. And 39 is too. So both 39 and 55, they are probably the most indecisive gates in the chart. And being aware of this, this is one of those things where leaning into your strategy and authority and not trying to make these decisions from your mind is so important because that is how you make the best decisions. And it might take you some time to really come to a conclusion to make the right decisions with this energy. That's just part of it. There is that indecision and ultimately relying on your strategy and your authority is going to give you the best possible decisions for you. Moving on to channel 20 to 12, the channel of openness or the channel of socialness. This is the channel that the singular Dell actually has, and this runs from the emotional solar plexus to the throat, the center of communication and action. And people that have this energy in their chart, they tend to be very musically gifted or gifted in fine art as well. And this ability to express their emotions through their creativity, through their art. And with the singer Adele, you can truly, when she sings, you can feel her emotions. And her music really does make people cry because other people can feel her emotions too when they hear her sing, when they hear her music. So this is also an example of like really being able to tap into somebody else's waves even when you're not necessarily in aura with them, and even if it's not live, because you can listen to a piece of music that Adele created years and years ago, and it can really make you feel in the now. This is something that can transcend time and space. It's powerful, powerful energy. Now, there's a big element of socialness here. It's actually the only like really social channel of the individual circuit. And there is that passion and the moodiness there and this energy when it's on it is charming and graceful and amazing and people love it but when it's off it's best to be alone this is definitely that moodiness where you, with that individuality in general honoring your moods knowing if you're not in the mood to be social if you're not in the mood to be out and about and doing your thing stay home is the best thing to do because you're moods, your energy will really impact other people and it can really bring them up and it can also bring them down, especially if they are emotionally undefined. There is a lot of empowerment in this energy about relating to the public and interacting with the public when in the right mood. And your words can be so impactful when they are expressed in the right timing. So even public speaking, sharing your truth with others in the right time with this energy is incredibly impactful. And as I have said before, the timing part is so important because when the timing is not right, this is not going to come out correctly and people are not going to be able to receive it in the way that you have intended. So again, honoring your moods and honoring your level of socialness is going to really impact how this energy lands. Another gift that people with this energy have is their ability to adjust what they're saying and how they are expressing themselves based on the social setting. So being able to be in different social settings and really adapt to how you express yourself depending on who you're around. The quality and the inflection of the voice is really impactful here. This can be really a big gift for public speaking, singing, being in the media. Um, I like having that right tone can be really impactful on other people. And you want to be really clear, emotionally clear before you act or speak in order to really make that impact. So if you have this wave and you're creating something new, 
not forcing yourself to put it out on any specific timeline, but really honoring that emotional authority, that inner knowing, that clicking when the time is right in order to express what you need to express. The two gates that form this channel are gate 12, which is on the throat center. And this can be the voice of caution in social situations and is very aware of the right timing and knowing to express when the time is right. And when in the mood, this is that energy that has such mutative potential for people through the words that you say and how you express yourself. So you want to make sure that you really take that time to express yourself in the right mood at the right time and not going to that place of just verbally blurting something out, maybe because you feel under pressure. And especially if you have this gate, if you don't have the whole channel, you have this gate on an undefined throat, you might feel this pressure to speak. And you want to really honor yourself and to wait for that right timing because when you wait, that is when you are so impactful and you're really able to change people through your words. The other gate in this channel is the 22, which is all about openness and being social and gracious when the timing is right, which again is going to very much depend on your moods. When you're in the mood, the timing is right. When you're not in the mood, the timing is not right. That is how you can gauge the timing. This energy is also really good at listening. Remember, this is acoustic energy, and this is a gate where you can really be a graceful listener. You have the ability to handle social situations correctly. You can be super charming, very attractive, and you're in the mood. And when you're not in the mood, the opposite can be true. There can be an element of being disgraceful and dishonoring both to yourself and to other people. So that timing and that mood is so important here. With this individual energy, this individual gate, when you truly listen to others, it can be so empowering to them. So this is a really, really beautiful gift. I know people that have the 22 and when you are with them and they are in that space, they can really listen to you. You really feel heard and it's so empowering. The way that this wave can show up in relationships and business. I have really, I think, <laughs> brought the point home that honoring your moods and honoring right timing is so important. You want to really be aware of the wave and where you are on it. So especially if you have either one of these channels and anybody that's emotionally defined, I always encourage you really track your wave. Note where you are. Are you high? Are you low? Are you neutral? Can you just be present with it and not make yourself wrong when you're not in the place you want to be in? Not beat yourself up for the lows. Not question what's going on or why you're feeling low or trying to put some reason to it because there's no reason. It's just chemical energy that is moving. And when you try to figure it out or fix it or you're just in this place of resistance, it actually prolongs the lows. So just recognizing the lows, allowing yourself to feel it and seeing what creativity comes through. Because you can also block that creativity when you're trying to figure it out, you're trying to repress it, you're trying to change it, you're trying to move it too fast. That's also going to block the creativity. Now, the same thing with the highs. Hanging on to the highs is not going to work either. So you want to enjoy the highs, share them with other people, just allow yourself to feel that experience and just allow that wave to move, being acceptance of the movement of the wave, being present with where you are on it. Now, when it comes to business with this wave, I know I talked so much about honoring your moods and the right timing to express yourself. And obviously, if you have a business meeting, you're seeing a client, maybe you've scheduled a masterclass, you're not going to be able to change that because you're not in the mood. So having practices that work for you, that help you create the right mood for those specific situations, EFT, tapping, meditation, doing intention setting rituals, whatever it is that gets you into the mood for those specific situations can be really helpful. And I recommend if it's not one of those situations where you have to be somewhere at a certain place at a certain time and you have to show up in a certain way, then just allow yourself to be in whatever place you're in and then reserve those things to get you into the mood for the times when you really need to be in it, when you need to show up in your business, with your clients, for a performance, whatever it may be, use those tools for that. And the rest of the time, just allow yourself to be in whatever mood you're in and learn to appreciate all aspects of the wave. Now in relationships, communication is really important. Helping your partner, your loved ones, your friends understand how this wave works, that you are somebody that does need a lot of alone time because this particular wave, when it's low, it operates best when it's alone. 
that's when the creativity comes through. So when you help other people understand that, they don't take it personally. And they can also, especially when you're talking to people that don't know anything about human design, helping them understand that it's not personal when you go through your lows. It's a very creative time for you. There's nothing wrong. They don't have to fix anything. There's not anything that they have to do. And that you just need your alone time, your time for creativity, and you'll be back when you're back. So that is it for the individual ways. I'd love to hear if you have any questions about this. If you are listening somewhere where you can comment, please comment and let me know how this landed for you. And if you are listening somewhere where you cannot comment, head over to Instagram at HD Vanessa Naja. Send me a DM, comment on one of the posts that's associated with this episode and let me know how it landed for you. Or if you have any questions, there's also going to be a post there that shows you where these waves are and gives you some more tips and tricks on how to navigate this wave. So go ahead and check that out. If you're ready to dive deep into your own emotional intelligence, into conscious business through emotional intelligence, into deconditioning through the act of sacred entrepreneurship, I invite you to check out my program, Emotional Intelligence by Human Design. You can find it at vanessanasha.com forward slash emotional intelligence. I will also leave a link in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening.